Welcome to the DLR webcast. At this uh, IGARS conference, we will report on our developments of algorithms and processes for the German missions TerraSarex, uh, Tandem X, and NMAP, as well as for the European missions. One of the highlights will be definitely the first results that we can present from Tandem X. Uh, in the, during the last year, we have uh, done our first coverage, our first global coverage, and these results already. Um, let us hope that we can meet all the requirements in these missions and even exceed them. There will be other results we will present, for example, from, um, uh, for atmospheric remote sensing, for trace gas um, retrieval products uh, from the METOP series of satellites and many, many more. Yes, synthetic aperture radar, in short, SAR, um, is a key technology both in the German uh, and in the European Earth Observation Program. The German SAR technology has developed during the last decades in big leaps with a lot of firsts. So um, CRC, for example, in 1994, um, we implemented together with NASA and the Italian AC um, the first multi-frequency SAR in space. SRTM in 2000 was the first um, single pass interferometer in space that gave us um, the first global digital elevation model of the world. In 2007, we launched TerraSarX, the first one meter resolution SAR, which has a geometric accuracy of decimeters or even centimeters. And finally, in 2010, we launched Tandem X, the first uh, free flying single pass interferometer that uh, flies in a close formation. Today's spaceborne SAR systems deliver either a very high spatial resolution or a wide coverage. Scientific and commercial users, of course, want both. And this is where the new developments go to. Another uh, challenge is uh, that we want to provide users with data from complementary wavelengths, for example, in the short X-band and in the long L-band. Um, during the last um, one and a half years, we have worked on a concept called Tandem L of a very exciting new mission that uses L-band to um, monitor dynamic processes of the Earth system. With this mission, uh, with these new technologies, we are able uh, to map the entire world at a high resolution every eight days. This has only been possible by a new mode called uh, scan and receive mode and by the very consequent uh, digitization of the entire signal chain. SAR data are used in many um, scientific, commercial and also uh, political applications. Um, uh, it ranges from oceanography to geology but also to humanitarian aid and the control of international conventions. Whenever we need a geodata, independent of weather conditions and illumination, then SAR data are the first choice. SAR data also are particularly interesting when we want to generate digital elevation models of large areas in a timely fashion, because the microwaves that are used by SAR are not um, obstructed by clouds and we can, we can generate very consistent and coherent uh, digital elevation models in a very fast time. Also, these microwaves that are used by SAR can penetrate some objects, for example, canopy. So uh, we can look into the forest and uh, much easier estimate the biomass of this forest. Besides conventional mapping of areas, uh, we use SAR, for example, for oceanography. We can estimate wind speeds, wave heights, but also detect ships and oil spills, an indispensable a tool for maritime safety and security. The technology of SAR interferometry is particularly suited to measure tiny little uh, displacements of the Earth's surface. 
for example, subsidence uh, caused by groundwater extractions on the cities or by tectonic uh, movements or uh, volcanic activities. Uh, in this, during this conference, there will be a lot of papers, hundreds of papers, dealing with the application of SAR in different fields. One interesting application is uh, biomass estimation, a topic that I mentioned already. Uh, we are using polarimetric uh, radar data, SAR data, to estimate the biomass of a forest, a very important parameter in the modeling of the carbon cycle. Also uh, interesting and uh, very well represented in this IGARS conference is data fusion. Data fusion tries uh, to combine data from different sensors, for example from SAR and from multi or hyperspectral sensors to obtain more information than uh, it would be obtainable from a single sensor. DLR's strength is its um, system capability. Together with an industrial partner, we master the entire system chain, beginning from the mission concept to the um, sensor technology. It goes to the uh, commanding of the satellite, reception of the data, processing the data, to our own uh, geoscientific research with this kind of uh, data. Of course, we cooperate internationally with ESA, NASA, JAXA, CNES, but uh, let me focus on our national corporations with industry and universities. Give you a couple of examples. Kerasarex and Tandemex uh, have been implemented in a public-private partnership. That means in practice that DLR is commanding the satellites, is receiving the data and processing them, both for the commercial distributor, Astrium um, uh, Geo Services, and um, all the, uh, the international and national scientific community. Second example I like to mention is a institutionalized, institutionalized um, cooperation of DLR with uh, university partners in the Munich area. The name is uh, Munich Aerospace Faculty for um, Aerospace. Uh, three of the research groups that have been founded there work on topics that are directly related with um, uh, SAR data and SAR technology. And as a last example, I like to come back to the Tandem L mission concept that I was uh, mentioning before. Uh, this mission concept, concept is uh, worked out very closely with uh, the respective um, user community in Germany and internationally. This was a DLR webcast.